Gather round, boys and girls. Today we'll be opening our Bibles back up to 1 Samuel to find out whatever happened to that shepherd boy turned giant slayer, turned drive-by gangster moil, turned outcast claimant to the throne of Israel, David. When last we saw our hero, he'd been forced to flee his beloved homeland and make for less friendly territory, namely the territory of the very Philistines whose dicks he had a habit of chopping off. Well, if there's one thing David does, it's kick ass. So the Philistines decided they'd forgive him for all the dick chopping if he would kick some ass for them. So he agreed to, even though sometimes he secretly didn't kick any ass and told them that he did, but in a heroic way. Now, I'm sure you'll remember that Saul was warring with these very same Philistines, and wouldn't you know it? Eventually, the king and his son Jonathan, whom David loved in the butt, were both killed in a great battle at Mount Geboa. But David definitely wasn't anywhere near that battle, and he was actually really sad that they both got killed, even though it meant he would be the new king of Israel. So once he'd spent enough time mourning for the king and his heir, that it would be clear to everybody that he definitely didn't have anything to do with it, he set about being king. And like I said, David is known for his kicking of ass, so his first major act as king was to kick some Jebusite ass, take over Jerusalem, and bring the Ark of the Covenant there. And that made God so happy that he promised that someone of David's line would always rule in Israel. And, of course, God always keeps his promises, but only if you ignore all the ones he breaks, like this one. Well, David went right on kicking ass. He kicked some more Philistine ass, then some Moabite ass, but along the way, he discovered something he liked even more than kicking ass, and that was tapping ass. You see, boys and girls, one day, David was looking down from the high walls of his palace and saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba taking a bath. So he watched her long enough to rub one out, but she was so beautiful that beating off just wouldn't do. So he told his guards to go get her so that he could rape her. And they did. And he did. Well, that wouldn't normally be a very big deal, of course, because Bathsheba was just a woman. But she was a married woman, and that made it a big deal. David wasn't just sexually violating an innocent woman after spying on her naked. He was sticking his dick in her husband's property which in the Bible is way worse. And David was in danger of getting caught, too, since she got pregnant while her husband Uriah was off at war. What to do? Well, David thought about it for a while, and he realized it wouldn't be such a big deal if her husband was too dead to notice. So he ordered Uriah's general to make sure he died in battle. The general did as he was told, and sure enough, Uriah died, and David married Bathsheba, and nobody was the wiser. So how did this story that nobody knew about wind up in the Bible? Well, it turned out that at least one person knew, and that person was God. God told the prophet Nathan, and then he told every damn body. And God was really mad at David for all the women raping and husband manslaughtering, so he decided to punish David. He would murder their baby as soon as it was born. That's right, boys and girls. God was mad at David. So he murdered a baby. And after the baby was good and murdered, God got over his anger and let David carry on being king. And everybody except Uriah and the murdered baby lived happily ever after. But the story of David doesn't end there, boys and girls, because Jesus himself is David's great, 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 great grandson. And judging by how much fucking he does in this book, so were most of the other Jews alive in Jesus' day. The 